Welcome to the Doctor's Kitchen podcast recipe. This is with Dr. Hannah Short. We have an incredible conversation about everything to do with the menopause, primary ovarian insufficiency, what that means, as well as her personal journey. And I make her a tempeh salad. It's a Thai style tempeh salad. Tempeh is one of my favorite ingredients and it also happens to be one of her favorite ingredients. You're gonna learn exactly how to use this wonderful ingredient, so check it out and also click on the link down below for the full podcast episode two. You're gonna absolutely love it. Even though it's the morning, I'm gonna be cooking you a Thai style tempeh salad. And I'm so glad you like tempeh because I've been wanting to use this for so long. Yeah. I'm a big fan of this stuff. Mm. I think it's got a great texture. Um, you just need to hit it with loads of flavor. So I'm gonna make a quick marinade. Tell us a bit about yourself. I'm a GP, but I'm also a menopause specialist and a um, specialist in premenstrual disorders as well. And so that interest kind of comes about really from a personal experience. And I guess it isn't really where I thought I would end up or thought what I'd end up doing at all. I was 27 when I went to med school. And at that point, I actually was really interested in psychiatry. And I was also interested in how your mental health is affected by a menstrual cycle. At that point, I wasn't really thinking about menopause, but I guess hormonal change generally. Yeah. Really interested in um, postnatal depression. But ultimately, things kind of changed because I became kind of unwell myself. I'd struggled, I think, throughout my whole teenage years and 20s with pain as a result of endometriosis. Um, I'd had several surgeries, I'd had various medical treatments, you know, including the pill and other hormonal treatments. And I did go through periods when actually stuff was a bit more stable. And that was what, right around the time that I applied to medical school, I was probably in a better place. But I think probably the stress of medical school and actually the stress, stress of being a junior doctor kind yeah. of set me back a bit. But then the PMS kind of took off as well in my 30, in my early 30s yeah. um, and I suspect now it would probably be diagnosed as premenstrual dysphoric disorder right so you know PMDD I must admit I don't think I've come across PMDD before mm -hmm. um, certainly nothing that I've come across in medical school I don't think we're um, taught about it really yeah yeah it is essentially a severe form of, of PMS is kind of like the most extreme end so it's basically an acute hormone sensitivity so an abnormal reaction to normal hormonal to normal. fluctuations gotcha. mm -hmm. luckily for me I wasn't quite as severe as, as, as some patients I've yeah. seen and sometimes people become incredibly irritable and, and, and angry. Other people will become suicidal. I think 30% of people with it attempt suicide. 30%? So, wow. Um, it, it is a big, it is an issue, um, but it's not recognised enough. I did have suicidal thoughts, quite intense, intrusive thoughts at times. Um, and I did think, I don't know how I can go on feeling like this. When my mood was very low, I probably didn't make the best health choices in terms of food mm. because I just wanted comfort food. Yeah. I think almost like being a physician and being a patient or having had that patient experience makes you a lot more empathic as a doctor. I mean, my personal experiences with ill health have never left me. Yeah. And I think, you know, your personal experiences, particularly as this is now your specialty, makes you a much more empathic doctor and someone that's actually a lot more understanding because, yeah, sometimes you do crave those crap foods and there's nothing else you can do about it, but you need to forgive yourself yeah. for that too. Somebody came up to me and she said, well, I, she changed her diet and she said, oh, it made it made the biggest difference so she'd gone completely plant-based and, mm. and I was like and I'm a big advocate for that and I said mm. well that's amazing and I'm so pleased that's helped and, that, and she said that's all women need to do and I said but 
it, it's not that black and white for yeah. everybody and it's not and I said I wish it were yeah. but I think it's disingenuous yeah. to say that if you just change your diet or yeah. your lifestyle that everything else is going to sort itself out it's mm. a huge part of the answer and it help, in, but it's, it's not the only answer and not for everyone absolutely I'm really glad you, you asked for temper because no one asks for temper. Everyone thinks it tastes bland, but it's de it depends on like what you cook it, how you cook it, yeah. how you prepare it. Like it's actually a really delicious ingredient. I probably would have been skeptical many years ago, but I've got a friend who's an amazing kind of vegan chef. And yeah. she, she makes her own tempeh and she makes black bean tempeh and stuff as well. And so she converted me to it. I've just started cooking at home a bit more. And I don't, if you steam it for 20 minutes, that often mm. gets rid of the bitterness. Delicious. Good. <laughs> the flavours are lovely. They're really nice. Good, good. I'm glad. If you want to listen to the rest of our conversation, please click the link down below and all of Dr. Hannah's links are down there as well. And we'll catch you there. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to support The Doctor's Kitchen, make sure you subscribe right now, like this video, and check out all the other videos we have right here. Also, go to thedoctorskitchen.com. There are plenty of recipes and other products there to help you live the healthiest life possible.